This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Happy Aloha Friday. Welcome to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii program. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. December 15th is designated as the Bill of Rights Day in the United States. A day of remembrance of the democratic, peaceful action by which these rights were gained. And I must say peaceful because it was a gnarly and bitter battle over the ratification of the U.S. Constitution for quite a few years and so many objections raised by anti-federalists in exhausting meetings and compromises before the amendments were able to be ratified on December 15th of 1791. I invite you to take some time to become intimately familiarized with at least the first 10 amendments of the U.S. Constitution and also hold conversations with your loved ones, neighbors, classmates, and students about the meaning of each amendment. Take some time individually and collectively to reassess their present meaning in their living worth in today's American society. And if you enjoy your personal freedoms and rights, and having clear limitations on the government power in the judicial and other proceedings, and specifically declarations that all power is not specifically uh, delegated to Congress by the Constitution, that shall remain reserved for the states and the people, then I hope you will find new and additional ways to mobilize for both freedom and human rights in this country and across the globe. Today's Perspectives on Global Justice program episode will be devoted to address an extremely marginalized group of society, not only in the United States but across the globe, sex workers. Some refer to them as prostitutes, hoes, or hookers, and many other names. But we will talk about the history of criminalization of sex workers globally in the United States, discuss the main reasons why and how criminalizing consenting sex adults who wish to engage in consenting sex work uh, jeopardizes their most uh, basic human rights to safety, protection and access to health, as well as their rights of living a life free from being further marginalized and persecuted. We will do a brief overview of where Hawaii is at as a state as far as current laws pertaining to sex work is concerned, as well as past and current efforts made by local and national social justice activists to amend current laws in the state of Hawaii so that sex work between consenting adults can be decriminalized and their human rights uh, be also uh, equally respected and protected. But we'll also talk about the difference between sex trafficking and sex work between consenting adults, which are very distinct from each other, because a lot of people mix them up, and also because um, it's not the same thing. And uh, in fact, in our state, in 2015, uh, the, our legislature uh, changed its uh, laws to make it so it's conflated between sex work and sex trafficking. Uh, despite the fact that the, of testimony of Amnesty International, which is the largest and one of the most respected human rights organizations on the globe, pointing out the differences between both sex work and uh, cons between consenting adults and sex trafficking survivors, as well as the human rights issues that the state of Hawaii would be violating by not making such distinctions, not providing training and guidelines to law enforcement and members of the criminal justice system to differentiate between both groups. I cannot think of a more special guest to join us to have this conversation today than Ms. Tracy Ryan. Tracy is the Executive Director of Harm Reduction Hawaii, and she's also a fierce advocate in the human rights of our state. She has done significant work in the fields of harm reduction advocacy in the state of Hawaii as well. And she's been uh, working very hard to also advocate for the decriminalization of sex work between consent consenting adults in the state of Hawaii. We got a lot to cover, and I want to make sure to also highlight the Hawaii Harm Reduction Conference, which is just around the corner on January 9th of 2018. On that note, welcome to our program. Oh, thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. So we have a lot of things to cover, mm -hmm. and uh, why don't we start with the conference, which is just around the corner, so that our viewers can get a little taste of what the conference is about, its history, and what are we going to cover this year. All right, well, Harm Reduction Hawaii is a local nonprofit, and its chief uh, activity is to put on uh, conferences 
uh, mostly attended by uh, social workers and social service providers, which discuss usually a variety of issues. Um, homelessness, addiction, sex work is often part of them, but all other things as well. Um, this is a special conference, kind of fit into, into our usual every two year harm reduction conferences. It's mainly going to focus on this one topic. It's called Deconstructing Sex Work and Sex Trafficking. It's going to be held January 9th of this coming year at the Alamoana Hotel in the, um, the uh, banquet section, the uh, hibiscus ballroom and some of the smaller rooms. And people who are interested can, should visit the website, which is just Google Harm Reduction Hawaii, and click on the website that says um, Conference 2017, and they will go to a tab for special events. So again, Harm Reduction Hawaii, Conference 2017 website, and click on special events, and everything you need to know is there. Right. So that's wonderful because uh, today we are going to be talking a little bit about uh, the basic differences between sex trafficking and uh, sex work between consenting adults. Because I think a lot of people mix them up, they think it's the same, or they don't understand the difference. So uh, could we have a, a, the picture with... Uh, I went to Google today, like most people can do, uh, to get a definition of, um, you know, human trafficking. And so, you know, I, I picked one from the United Nations because I think they set the tone globally, you know, for how we look at this. And so, you know, the definition from the United Nations is that human trafficking is the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring or receipt of persons by improper means, such as force, abduction, fraud, or coercion, uh, for an improper use, including labor of sexual exploitation. So, um, Tracy, you know, I know that when we do our advocacy work here in the state of Hawaii, and I think across the globe, uh, across the nation, um, we have a lot of people who make this confusion between the distinction and consider sex work sex trafficking. Yes. Why is that? Oh, well, because the federal government in 2001 has started putting out hundreds of millions of dollars to prom promote uh, the idea that sex work is sex trafficking because some people have as a political point of view that, that we should be abolishing all prostitution by saying that it is all sex trafficking. But um, these, it, it kind of um, undermines our American system of justice, first of all, because it dis disregards the need to have evidence in criminal cases. Uh, and it also uh, puts people into various defined boxes and defines their characters and what they're doing without knowing the individual themselves and what they're actually doing and what their actual life experiences are. So there's a box for someone who purchases sex, which is called a John often, and that's defined a certain way. And the individual situation is not part of that definition. There's a box for someone who sells sex, and that's being defined as someone who is either um, being controlled by some vicious controller or someone who is so, so terribly desperate they can't do anything else and is desperate to leave prostitution. OK, so then we're getting into boxes. We're not looking at evidence of those things. And we're not looking at individual stories or listening to anyone telling their own truthful story that doesn't fit into the box. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if we go to with the definition of sex worker, uh, I picked this one from the World Health Organization, which is also part of the United Nations. So sex work is the provision of sexual services for money or goods. Uh, and I may add uh, between consenting adults. And uh, sex workers are women, men, transgender people uh, who receive money and goods in exchange for sexual services, who consciously define those activities as income generating, even if they do not consider sex workers as their main occupation or an occupation. So if you compare both definitions, we clearly see that uh, sex work does not meet the threshold of sex trafficking. Of course no, not. We I don't. mean, it's, it's simple. It's yeah. a simple thing. Um, 
uh, do we understand the meaning of force, fraud, and coercion or not? They have common language definitions. If we simply apply those and look at actual evidence, we're fine. We won't have this discussion. But that's not how people are, are, are proceeding. Currently, uh, they're prosecuting a lot of um, the people who are managing massage parlors, and you know that's locally going on, as a way of, say, taking the profit out of prostitution. They're not finding that the women who are working there are being forced or coerced at all. However, this is part of their effort to, apparently to fight sex trafficking, to arrest and prosecute people who clearly aren't abusing or enforcing other people are using minors at all. So it's 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 a, it's a problematic activity. Well, I think that like the both of us have followed very closely uh, the changes in the state legislation in 2015 on how um, by law now there is a completion a definition that sex work and human trafficking are the same, and so it it really gives room for criminalization of sex work because the assumption is, is that a sex worker is being trafficked or being a sex worker is a crime of, of trafficking too. Uh, I'm not sure about the, the definition that you're referring to because what they did was they took the a statute called promoting prostitution in the first degree which described a person who did the things we talked about in terms of trafficking uh, in terms of force, fraud, blah, 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 or uh, promoting the prostitution of a minor. And they changed the title of it from promoting prostitution in the first degree to sex trafficking. Yes. That's what they did. So there is a So now there's a there. definition of sex yeah. trafficking, which is separate from the definition they're using for promoting prostitution. Because mm -hmm. now they have promoting prostitution in the, in the first degree as anyone who profits from prostitution. There's no force, fraud, coercion, minors are at all in that other statute. In the other statute, which is a lesser crime, but it's still 10 years in prison, mm -hmm. is the one that there's the law enforcement seem to be spending all their time mm -hmm. pursuing rather than the sex trafficking one, which I gather is harder for them to make cases. Well, the thing is, I think that part of the problem that I see as a social justice advocate, and not only in this country, across the globe uh, when it comes to the decriminalization aspect of sex work uh, is the lack of education, number one, in the definition of you know, both groups, uh, but also how systems uh, you know, create new problems that really uh, put more hardship for a person, for example, who is a sex worker without considering the ramifications in their lives. So like Amnesty International, for example, they've done a very lengthy study uh, across the globe uh, on the conditions of sex workers and uh, what were the issues that they were struggling with. And across the globe, when you criminalize, you know, a profession like this, it marginalizes it, you know, uh, there are a couple of issues there. The, the, the abuse of law enforcement, which I'm sure you can talk about it, uh, the lack of access that they are prevented uh, from having with regards to health care, because uh, I think a lot of sex workers do not want to be targeted and reported, uh, you know, for being a sex worker, you know, when they go to the doctor. Uh, and there's also the issue of safety, you know, because if you're really trying to... Uh, you know, work to combat sex trafficking, it's least likely that when you put a profession like sex work underground, that, you know, people will come forward. Well, uh, you know, to, to it, all people in this country have to do is understand the situation we had during the prohibition of alcohol, to, under, to realize that when you create a black market economy in, any, in anything, criminals take over, abuse rules, and everything is worse for everybody. So the criminalization of, of sex work is not helping people who are trafficking victims one iota. It's hurting a lot of other people who are not trafficking victims. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do any good for anybody. Absolutely. And plus, it does not address um, the rights that sex workers have to have the same access to respect and protection 
uh, and value that uh, a sex trafficked individual would have. You know, the human rights of sex traffickers, uh, I'm sorry, the sex trafficked individuals uh, is as important as the human rights of someone who's a sex worker. And I think that that's what the, the disconnect is still as a society. Well, yeah, because currently we have established what, what you could see as a two-tiered system for people who commit acts of prostitution. Mm -hmm. If you claim that you're a sex trafficking victim to the police, you can might avoid going to jail. You may not have a criminal conviction, and if you do have one, you can probably get it cleared from your record, which is very important in getting on with your life. Mm -hmm. If you're not claiming sex trafficking victim, you get to go to jail, you get to be shamed for because you did something deliberately on your own, you get to have a criminal record that can follow you for decades mm -hmm. and create all sorts of problems in your life. So it's, it's it, unless there's a deliberate effort to get people to falsely claim sex trafficking status, this, this, this situation makes no sense. Yeah. And it's very deceitful, too. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break and get back at this conversation. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Planning all week for the day of the big game. Watching at home just doesn't feel the same. What on the list is who's gonna drive? It's nice to know you're gonna get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. Choose the DT. Captain of our team is the DT. For every game day, assign a designated driver. Welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii program. This is Beatrice Contelmo, and I'm back with Tracy Ryan. So, Tracy, we were talking about how the laws really um, have been changing, and it's actually quite deceitful to set people into that place of if you're caught doing sex work um, and it's a crime here, you're also being given a choice, <laughs> quote unquote. Uh, to declare that you were uh, sex trafficked, and so you have all of these bonuses, you know, right. of the rescuing industry. The, the issue of providing a two-tiered system is problematic. Mm -hmm. um, one of the presenters at our conference will discuss a labor trafficking case from about 15 years ago up in Canada where she interviewed a bunch of people who allegedly had been human trafficked into Canada from China, but after they were denied um, asylum in Canada and they were going to go back, she interviewed them and all of them said they'd lied about being trafficked, 100% of her sample, because they wanted the benefit. Uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't help our system at all. Um, the, you know, this criminalization of, of, of prostitution, unless you're a sex trafficking victim, doesn't work. It's either... If you don't think that sex trafficking victims should be prosecuted, and they absolutely shouldn't, then why are we prosecuting consensual people who are not being trafficked by anyone? It doesn't make any sense. Well, the thing is, um, you have a system that is trying to help sex uh, traffickers, but I don't think that they are doing it in the right way. No. And one of the issues that Amnesty have brought globally, and it's actually, I think, the state of Hawaii was the first state in this nation to actually have a, a testimony provided, uh, you know, during legislative session, during a time that was very crucial to address the differences between sex trafficking and sex work, and to say, look, you shouldn't do this because, number one, they're very distinct groups. Um, you can't conflate then, because then you're starting to run into all of these, you know, problems and the human rights violations too, and you're still not uh, helping sex workers uh, 
you know, thrive and, and their human rights are being violated and you're not helping sex trafficked individuals either. Unfortunately, yeah. the testimony is given to a legislative body which mm -hmm. is responsive to whatever amount of fear and hysteria exists among their constituents and not really particularly interested in any kind of reason, logic, or facts which are presented in testimony. So it's, it's our job as people who want to deal with uh, problems of human trafficking in a, in a logical way and not hurt consensual sex workers to try to get a better conversation going, which is part of the reason we're doing this conference. Yeah. We want people to come together from around the state, people who can sit around and talk civilly, ex explain their, their points of view and, their, and they, what they see as problematic and work out a better system than what we have, because what we have right now is no good. And, and part of this is um, education, and that's Absolutely. the starting point. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, talking about anything that has to do with sex is very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is a taboo, I think, in most societies. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a good, it's something that I bring up frequently when we're talking about um, trafficking. Because as you know, I, in, in Amnesty is very aware that there's Traffic, human trafficking exists in a lot of areas, in uh, sweatshops, on these fishing boats we're hearing about, in farm labor, mm -hmm. um, various, even domestic service, you know, maids and butlers could be victimized and being held in, 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 in non-sex trafficking situations. But of all of these things, no one is saying, let's go out and make being a maid a crime or arrest everyone who hires farm labor because, you know, because there is trafficking there. In, you know, but our solution to sex trafficking is let's abolish the whole industry. And the only reason that it makes, seems to make a difference is because people are, are seeing sex as something that is just distinctly different and have an issue with it. And um, some of the stuff that I've read from some of the people who are promoting this, you know, that this prostitution is slavery idea, when you start reading it, it sounds like um, warmed over. Victorian advice that mothers gave to their daughters about the horrors of the wedding night. That the whole idea of having sex with a man is something that you had to bear in order to be a good wife and mother. You know, this is a very strange idea in our modern context for people to think this way, but a lot of people who are describing themselves as feminists are using very much the same argument that this is a, this is a sex is a harmful thing and it's in and of itself to women, if it involves a man. Well, but I think also that there is the assumption that sex work is only and primarily done by women. We have men no, who are in the industry. Of we have LGBT, people, exactly. Yes, of course, of course we do. And so we need to broaden in our, our, our perspective on sexuality and sex. And the truth of the matter is, you know, actually, a couple months ago, I had to do a training uh, that would address the differences between sex trafficking and sex uh, work. And I've given, I've given an example of uh, just a couple that, you know, live together. Um, they did share the money, but uh, the wife really didn't work much, so the guy had more money, so she kind of got a, like an allow allowance, but without explaining that part of it really explaining what their relationship and what their, you know, his desire of like how often he wanted to have sex versus, uh, you know, what her reality was of like, no, it's not happening. Uh, and then I described also uh, um, an example of just a couple that met, you know, for a sex exchange in the sex work industry. And people could not differentiate. And that was exactly the point. If you are two or more consenting adults and you have decided that you're going to engage in a sexual activity and, you know, you're all in agreement with what that's going to be, it's nobody's business. And, well, but you would, yet, you would we don't, so. yeah, but we you still, so. we particularly still, in a state, you know, we talked about it being Bill of Rights Day. And one of the stuff, things which aren't in the Constitution Bill of Rights are the words from the Declaration of Independence saying life, liberty, or the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. Not in the Constitution, mm -hmm. but they are in the state of Hawaii's Constitution. Mm -hmm. So in the state of Hawaii, people are guaranteed liberty. Mm -hmm. So that's the default position. So for the state to come in and the legislature to pass a law against anything, they should have a burden to prove 
that this law is doing good, to show that it's necessary, to show that it's that it's reducing harms and not creating harms, yeah. but they don't seem to feel they have any burden at all. Actually, let's talk a little bit about the burden because the part of being really charged with sex work is that you have a criminal record. So I'll actually read this really quickly. So the implications of that and the collateral consequences. So evictions, uh, denial of public housing benefits, no access to student or financial aid, and limited employment options, loss of child custody, and even risk of deportation. And those are uh, just the legal problems. And these are just the legal problems. Not the, yes. the social ones of having that shame. Exactly. You may not be able to find a husband. Exactly. It, it's maybe alienated from your family. Yeah. Uh, and all sorts of other jobs, teaching positions, et cetera, mm -hmm. may follow you around. But what is basically a crime of a 10-second conversation between a, two adults on a public street at 2 in the morning. That's the, that's the crime that most people are carrying around for decades affecting their later life. And that is the one thing I think we need to also focus in terms of the decriminalization aspect of it is look at all the burden that we could lift off of sex workers who actually are consenting adults who are engaging in sex work, uh, you know, knowingly and are in control of their situation too. Because I think there is this perception that, oh, they're, you know, tortured, very poor, or marginalized, you know, and... And, some, and it's like, it, they could be, and they could but it's be. like, yeah. um, there are people who practice what's called survival sex, who are selling sex, who are basically really hardcore addicts, and these people are not being trafficked by anybody because traffickers don't want hardcore addicts because they don't generate much money. Or they're teenage runaways. Again, by definition, by some definitions, everyone under 18 is a sex trafficking victim. But most of the minors who are selling sex are not being controlled. They're mostly runaways who are doing survival sex. So it's, it's still something there's, there's a lot of problems with it, but we, we, we need to understand that the services and the, result, and the reaction to it has got to be tempered for what the individual case is. Then there is, as you've said, there are plenty of women, adult women, transgender people, men, who are selling sex because of simply it's money. They're making money on it just like people do with all sorts of jobs. They may not love the job, they may not hate the job, but it's what it is, it's labor. And for these people, uh, we need to be allow, allow them to make that choice, to make their living, to not arrest them, and to certainly not try to arrest all of their clients to try and save them, which is some people's idea of, of being helpful. We're helping you by arresting the clients. Right. That Cutting off my income is not helping me. For children under the age of 80, or young adults, you know, teenagers under the age of 80, I think the part that's very hard even with survival sex is that by law they are not considered that age to make that decision. But I do agree with you that uh, Children under the age of 18 who are engaged in the sex work industry should never be criminalized for it. No. I think yeah. that the change we made in the law recently that made it a violation subject to family court for people under 18 selling sex was good. The logic was continuing to make it a crime for adults, mm -hmm. which is backwards from every other rule we have about young people. For, for smoking, for drinking, for, for, for a hundred other things, what's legal for adults is not for children. Here it's more legal for children than for adults, which is just bizarre. Right. I can't believe how quickly our program, you know, went through uh, 30 minutes just like well, that. Well, people remember to come to the conference and to register at that website that we mentioned. We'll be in good shape. Absolutely. And uh, may this be the first of many visits that you pay us. And uh, thank you so much for... Uh, being here for your expertise and your passion and uh, thank our uh, viewers for watching us and uh, see you next Friday, we hope.